So in today's video, we're learning how this circuit works, how we can calculate the components, and we're answering the question 2.7 from the Art of Electronics. So let's get started. Exercise 2.7. We need to design a Zener reference, but this time we need to use the emitter follower circuit after the Zener regulator that we did in the last question. In this exercise, we are doing some comparisons to the last question, so make sure you check out that video as well. So that's exercise 2.6. So for the question, we need to design a 10 volt supply with the same specifications as in exercise 2.6. We're using a Zener and this time with a emitter follower. For the question, we need to calculate the worst case power dissipation in the transistor and the Zener. We need to work out the percentage change in the Zener current from no load to full load conditions. We need to compare this circuit with the previous circuit. And then finally, we need to calculate the power rating the Zener must have in order to meet requirements for the circuit. So some of the requirements from the previous question, a 10 volt regulated power supply, the load current was from 0 milliamps to 100 milliamps. The input voltage was 20 to 25. And we needed to allow at least 10 milliamps of current through the Zener under all conditions. So we will be trying to follow these rules for the question. So first of all, let's just look at the circuit. So if you remember last time, we had a Zener regulator, which was basically a resistor with a Zener diode. Now for this question, we have added a emitter follower. So you can see this regulated Zener voltage is over here. And then we have an emitter follower. Our load resistor is down here. And then we have this RC resistor over here. So let's quickly talk about how this circuit works. So obviously we have our power supply, which is 20 volts in this case. It can be a maximum of 25 volts. So if you just look at this part over here, the Zener diode will start conducting at 10 or 10.6 volts, depending on the Zener diode that we select. So it will keep the base voltage at 10.6 volts. That means that the remainder of the voltage will be across R1. So in this case, obviously, we've got 20 volts here. So if we had 10.6 here, then we'll have 9.4 on the resistor. Then going from here, obviously, we've got 10.6 here. And we know from theory that the base emitter voltage, which is the voltage from here to here, is going to be roughly 0.6. So that's what we're going to assume. So that means that our VE or V out is going to be 10 volts. So 10.6 minus 0.6 over here. So that gives us an output voltage of 10, which is what we need for the question. Obviously, this is assuming we can get a 10.6 volt center. Now, the purpose of this resistor over here is to limit the maximum current that can flow in this direction and it basically protects the NPN transistor from overcurrent. So what I'm going to do now is show you how to calculate the component values for R1, RC and how we can basically configure this circuit to get 10 volts on the output. So going back to this circuit, I've modified it slightly because I went on to Farnell, which you can see the result over here and they don't have many 10.6 or any 10.6 Zener diodes. They do have a few 10.5s, but I don't really want to use that because there's only two. So what I'm going to do for this circuit is basically select a 10 volt Zener over here and then add a silicon diode in this direction, which will produce 0.6 volts here. So that means that the base voltage will be the Zener voltage, which is 10 volts plus the 0.6 volts. And that gives us the 10.6 volts that we need here in order to get our 10 volts on the output. So this is the slightly modified circuit, which is not shown in the book. So we know that V out and V E is the same thing. V E being the emitter voltage. So this is a NPN BJT, obviously. We've got our base here. We've got our collector voltage here. And we've got the emitter voltage here, which is also the output voltage. V B E is 0 0.6, as we've discussed before. Therefore, the base voltage becomes 10.6, which we have achieved with this additional PN diode over here. So this allows us to select our Zener and our silicon diode over here. So we need to get a 10 volt Zener and a standard silicon diode, which will give us the 10.6 volts that we need on the base. Now, in order to calculate R1, we see the question tells us that we need to pass at least 10 milliamps of current through the Zener as before. I'm going to start off with an assumption that we have, we have a minimum beta of 50 and our load current, obviously, from the question is 100 milliamps. Therefore, we need to pass approximately 1.96 milliamps through the base in order to get a collector current of 98.4 milliamps. 
the emitter current is equal to the base current plus the collector current. So if you put these two together, so 1.96 plus 98.04, we basically get our load current of 100 milliamps. So now we know that we have 10 milliamps flowing in this direction, and we have 1.961 milliamps flowing in this direction. So the current through R1 is going to be 1.961 milliamps plus the 10 milliamps, which gives us 11.96 milliamps through R1. Now we can calculate the lowest current through R1 by using minimum power supply minus the 10.6 volts over here. So that gives us a voltage across R1 of 9.4. Now using Ohm's law, if we divide 9.4 volts by 11.96 milliamps, we get a resistance value of 786 ohms. So that is how you would calculate R1 approximately, because things will change because the beta is never consistent for the transistor. But this way you can guarantee a close to minimum current that was requested from the question. Now in order to calculate RC, as I explained before, the RC helps to protect the transistor by limiting the maximum output current. So if you were to short circuit all of this, obviously the 90 ohms would be in line with the power supply and that would be the limit of the maximum current we can get from our power supply in this case and through the transistor. Now the book tells us that we need to choose RC values such that its voltage drop is less than the voltage drop across R1 at maximum normal loads. So we calculated the voltage drop across R1 to be 9.4 volts. So what I'm going to do is select a value of 9 volts for this resistor and we're going to be running approximately 100 milliamps. It's going to be closer to 98 milliamps but let's just say 900 milliamps and that gives us a resistance of 90 ohms for RC. So that means we have basically selected all the components that we need for the circuit. So we basically modified the circuit slightly to get our 10.6 volts here. We selected a 10 volt Zener. We still need to calculate the maximum power rating for this. We selected our R1 and RC. And obviously the load is given to us by the question, which can go from 0 milliamps all the way up to 100 milliamps, which would be a 100 ohm resistor over here. Now the first question was calculate the worst case dissipation in the transistor and the Zener. So let's first of all start off with the transistor. So the worst case power dissipation across the transistor will occur at the maximum load, so that's 100 milliamps, and the maximum power supply, so 25 volts. So we've got our output voltage is 10 volts, our maximum power supply is 25, and our maximum load is 100 milliamps. The voltage drop across RC will be 9 volts, so that's 90 ohms times 0.1 amps or 100 milliamps. After calculating RC, we can basically calculate the voltage drop across the collector and the emitter for the transistor, which is VCE, and that is equal to the power supply minus the voltage drop across the resistor minus the output voltage, which is the emitter voltage. In this case, we have 25 volts and 9 volts across RC and minus 10 volts for the output. So that gives us a transistor voltage of 6 volts. Now obviously we know the current, which is 100 milliamps, and if we multiply those two together, we get a maximum power dissipation for the transistor of 600 millivolts. Now the worst case power dissipation for the Zeno is slightly different because it occurs at minimum load, not maximum. So we're going to assume our power supply is at maximum, so 25 volts. The Zener voltage is obviously 10 volts and basically our load is not connected so there's no load current. So the current going into the base is negligible or close to zero. Then we can calculate the maximum voltage on R1 which is the supply voltage minus the Zener voltage minus the diode voltage. So that's 25 minus 10 minus 0 0.6 which gives us a R1 voltage of 14.4 volts. 14.4 volts divided by the resistance basically using Ohm's law here. So 14.4 divided by 786 gives us a current through the resistor of 18.3 milliamps. Now we said that we don't have any current through the base. So all of that current is going through the Zener diode. And we know the Zener voltage is 10 volts. So if you multiply the Zener current and the Zener voltage together, we get a maximum power dissipation across the Zener diode of 183 millivolts. 
Next, we need to calculate the percentage change in the Zener current from no load condition to full load. So obviously we calculated the current at no load of 18.3 milliamps. And then we can calculate the current through the Zener at maximum load, which is basically 100 milliamps. So our power supply, we're going to have as 20 volts, as that will produce the lowest current through the diode. Our Zener voltage is 10 volts again, and our load current is 100 milliamps. The current through the base is going to be 1.961 milliamps, assuming a beta of 50. And then we need to calculate the maximum voltage across R1, which is basically 20, which is our power supply minus the Zener voltage minus the diode voltage, which gives you a voltage of 9.4 volts across the resistor. We know that the resistor is 786 ohms. So if you use Ohm's law, basically 9.4 divided by 786 gives you a current through that resistor of 11.96 milliamps. Now to calculate the current through the Zener diode, we basically need to get the resistor current, which is 11.96 milliamps, and minus the current going into the base of the transistor. We calculated that as previously being 1.961 milliamps. So 11.96 minus 1.96 gives you 10 milliamps through the diode and the Zener diode. We know the Zener voltage is 10 volts. So the power dissipation across the Zener diode is going to be 10 volts times 10 milliamps, which is equal to 100 millivolts. Now, if we did all of our calculations properly, then we kind of know that it's 10 milliamps from the question because the question tells us to pass a minimum of 10 milliamps through the Zener diode. So we could have just used that instead of doing all of this, but this is the way to calculate it if you had the circuit in front of you. So that is a percentage change of 45. So basically went from 183 down to 100 millivolts from no load to full load. Now, if we compare this with the circuit and the calculations that we did in question 2.6, and if you've not seen that video, please check it out on my channel. We had a maximum Zener current of 165 milliamps under no load conditions. And then at maximum load, depending on the power supply, obviously, we had either 10 milliamps or 65 milliamps. And you can see that the percentage change for this circuit is a lot worse. So if I was just looking at this one here, which is the same condition that we calculated on the previous slide, we get a change of 94% compared to 45% on the last one. So for the last part of the question, we need to calculate the power rating the Zener must have in order to meet the requirements for the circuit. So we knew that the maximum current through the Zener diode is 18.3 milliamps. And we know that the Zener voltage is 10 volts. So multiply those together and you get a power dissipation of 183 milliwatts. So that's what you need for your Zener diode. Obviously, go above that if you're building this circuit in real life. So the maximum Zener current, again, is at no load and maximum power supply. So that's all I have to share with you today. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy the content. I'm continuing with the Art of Electronics series, but if you want to support this channel, consider becoming a member or giving a super thanks. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.